Welcome in to the Cubs Talk Podcast, a production of NBC Sports Chicago, NBCSportsChicago.com. Tony Gill at the controls today. Gordon Whitmire, Tim Stebbins, I'm David Kaplan. So the Wilson Contreras era comes to an end when he says no thank you to the $19 million qualifying offer. 19.65. To be accurate. He is going to test free agency, and he should have multiple suitors willing to pay him that amount of money times multiple years or close. Yeah, I I, I think he's going to do fine at the end. I think the trade market has to play out a little bit. Toronto's got a couple catchers they might put on the market, and Oakland's got a pretty good catcher people think uh, is available. That might play out first. But once the free agent market starts heating up at that position, I think he's going to do all right. I think a, a, a nice, strong four-year deal. But as well as he does, no thanks to the damn Cubs for saddling him with the qualifying offer after not trading him, after putting him through all that crap, after not you know, crickets for extension talks. And then uh, what they did, and, and this this part gets me <laughs> as much as anything because it really underscores what I think at the end of the day was kind of malpractice by the team for a guy that did so much. Look, it's a business. Yeah, you, I was about to say no, malpractice no, no. in the damn here, Cubs. Here. They, they let just me finish. Ho- hey, hey, let me He's finish. He's a businessman. Look, man, let, just let me finish, all right? Because you don't want him? Fine. You want to take him through arbitration? Fine. You want to give him the qualifying offer? Not extend. All that's fine. All that's business. But when they go to his last year of arbitration... And over, I don't know, a few hundred thousand dollars, draw a hard line in a year when the arbitration hearings are in mid-season and take him up to the night before with no talks. I mean, that to me is over the top. That to me is splitting splitting, uh, dimes and nickels hairs on this thing, to mix a couple metaphors. When, when, when When you're talking about a guy that was one of those guys that year, and who, by the way, has been the starter in three of the last four All-Star games. Yeah, I don't disagree with the whole... that Lucas Giolito, we saw 50 grand was what they were hung up on. They spend that on road trip money. Exactly. New money, the teams. Exactly. So I didn't get that, and I don't disagree with you there. The rest of it, it's a business, man. You know what? And you dangle him in, in, in trades. Now, the, the Astros deal, that would have been a great deal. Now, they want to try to tell us that there wasn't much of a market for him outside of that. And to be clear, and 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 this is a fact, uh, Soto, Juan Soto's sort of, he held up the market because they weren't sure he was going to be available. Then he was available. Then teams were all in on him. That held up some of the hitters on the market. And, you know, he might have wound up, Wilson might have wound up in San Diego, if not for that. I mean, they were one of the teams that were in that market. So, so there's a little bit of that involved, but that was a hell of a deal that Jed just about closed if he'd have gotten Jose or, or Kitty until Dusty and the owner uh, nixed it when the GM there ha- had the deal. Now, they still had roughly 20 to 24 hours to work with and decided to, to take their catcher and go home and, and uh, hit him with the qualifying offer for, for a draft pick. Maybe there was literally nothing there, but it seems like there might have been at least a there might have been something there. So Tim, with this being the end of his era, I think all you have left from the World Series pretty much is Kyle Hendricks. He's been injured. Right. And we don't know Rossi's if he has a right arm anymore. Right. Rossi's the manager. So what are your thoughts about looking back at Wilson, who will be in another uniform? Um. Nice. <laughs> Close. I mean, close to what? You threw it at the camera. There's no 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 basket no. there. I'm trying to throw it over there. I missed. All right. <laughs> um. Look, like I think, I think uh, everyone seems like when we're evaluating him as a free agent uh, option for teams, you can eat, teams people start leaning towards what he does not so well or poorly compared to what he does well. And like in, in writing about this, the rejection of the QO, like I looked back to his debut to the end of the 2022 season. And I think where he ranks among offensive catchers cannot be understated. Like second in OPS, 
second in WRC plus, fifth most home runs. I think he's what was he the only the second Cubs catcher in team history to hit 100 home runs. The other one was Gabby Hartnett, a Hall of Famer. So like, I think that's that's the things that also matter. Like, sure, if you want to say he deserves this much or this much for the reasons being defense is a thing, fine. But um, Contreras leaving. There's no other way to say the Cubs are losing a damn good player, and I get that that nature of that position maybe has changed and how you use it maybe is more defensive-oriented, but that doesn't take away from what he's contributed. And, okay, so if he's gone, you better find a way to make up for that offensively somehow. So how do they replace not the the behind-the-plate innings? He has a great arm. They've got Jan Gomes, and they'll put somebody else there with him. That's a big bat out of your lineup. Well, it's a huge bat. And uh, they, they already needed bats. So, I mean, if you're – look, let's talk about catcher for a minute. Jan Gomes isn't catching 155 games for you. No. And now you drop down to P.J. Higgins, who's, you know, nice role player. Uh, I don't think he's a regu- part he's of a, a regular good replacement rotation. replacement player. And then you've got uh, your, your best catching prospect the last few years, Miguel Amaya, can't stay healthy, and he's not healthy right now. He's, he's in the process of yet another injury comeback. So – can you count on him? I don't think you can count on him. Plus, he's never played a day in the majors. And and so, you know, he's at least unproven, even if he's healthy. So what do you do? You got to go out and get somebody. You probably go out and get a, a veteran backup type. Uh, so it's almost like you got to get, I won't call him a starter, but co-starter. Co-starter. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, here's a goal. Is it 230? Yeah, but but here's here's the thing, Cap. You, you've got deficits all over the field when it comes to bats. So you could go to first base and, and find somebody. You know, we talked a little bit about Cody Bellinger, right? Uh, we don't know if he's going to be non-tendered. He might be a non-tender guy. And if he's available, he's had two miserable seasons the last two years, some of that involving some injuries. But uh, he could be one of these one-year guys as he tries to rebuild value. You go get a guy like that, he can play center field for you. He can play first base for you. If you can keep him healthy, he's a he's a guy. He won an MVP, made a couple of all-star teams. He's left-handed bat. So he, you could get some offense back with the move at another position, which you're going to have to go try to do anyway. And they're in that shortstop market. If they get one of those shortstops, you're, you're adding a pretty significant bat. By the way, we, you said they only have had two catchers hit 100 home runs. So I had to go to my phone and look, thinking maybe Randy Hundley did it. He hit 80 as a Cub. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Crazy. You would think in all those years you'd have more than two guys that hit 100 in your uniform. I think what it tells you more than anything, that's not a Cubs aberration thing. That's how rare really good hitting catchers are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go look in the Hall of Fame and, you know, you got your Johnny Benches and your Yogi Berra's. Um, but there aren't many guys that can produce MVP caliber offense from that position. And he's, he's the, you know, Tim, Tim laid it out. I mean, he's basically the best hitting catcher uh, in the game the last few years. So, Deion Gomes, back to that part of the discussion, like you said, co-starter. Well, what I mean by that is, like, sure, Jan Gomes might take the bulk of the starts, but, like, I think you need to have, as they did in 2022, like, two guys that you trust back there with a variety of pitchers. And, like, if we're saying, fine, maybe, like, Jed Hoyer talked about, it's kind of a two-way position, or, like, the, he really stressed at the GM meetings. It's a run prevention position, right. he said. So, you you if that's where they're at, like, you you got to make sure that both guys are capable of, uh, in that regard, but are also able to handle a variety of pitchers. Like when you, some teams have the luxury, the Phillies, Yachty, all those years in St. Louis, like that is your guy. He's probably going to play more often than not. Um, I think Jan Gomes has, and he could easily take on, you know, he's going to, he's going to, right. He's going to take on 120, 30 starts, but uh, as a catcher also, you're not going to make him, you don't want that workload on a guy, I guess. Right. So you want someone who's reliable and he might not, he's not going to start more than Jan Gomes, but, and not interchangeable because Jan Gomes. I'd like to have Jan Gomes catch 110 games and have another guy catch 50 something. If he, if he can stay healthy, that's reasonable. I say not interchangeable, but maybe, like, with all respect to Jan Gomes, you want two guys you're comfortable with back there. That's kind of what I mean. Yeah. By the way, what are you drinking there, Cap? Is that polar ice? It's 
called Polar Seltzer. Oh. I'm a big seltzer You know guy. what Polar Ice is? Mm-mm. It's the Venezuelan beer. Oh, I didn't know that. It's awesome. I, I love it. <laughs> Never had it. Yeah, I, saw, yeah, I thought, no, you were, I thought just, that was in honor of Wilson. You were drinking no, some Venezuelan beer over just there. Just a Polar Seltzer because I am in the middle of my intermittent fast. So I haven't had oh, any okay, food since okay. 7.30 last night. So I try to do that six days a week. What? what uh, how long do you go? With, with Between 16 and 18 hours. Oh, wow. I, I did that for a while where I did 16. Like every day it was 16. It was like 16, 8. It was noon to 8. I didn't lose a damn pound. He'd eat like three pizzas in the middle of well, the I, eight hours. Yeah, I got, I got hungry, food. man. I got hungry when it was time to eat. Press box food. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned the shortstop market. That they're going to be in there. Jesse Rogers was on the radio with me. We got to get him on the podcast. He did the White Sox this week. We'll get him next week and have him join us. He says there's no chance, in his opinion, they're giving one of those long deals to any of those four okay. guys. Okay, now you, you brought this up last week. I told you that the day you, before, and I also wrote it the right. day Jesse told you. So do you believe that's I think our source now. is the same. Do you think it's changed now? Here... Uh, I don't think it's changed as a, I don't think it's a hard and fast rule. I think it's a preference. And I don't think it's changed into a new opinion now that they've seen the market. So if Tim said to you, hey, guess what? I got a tip. Trey Turner's in town. He's visiting the Cubs. And Trey Turner said to the Cubs, guess what? I'm in if you'll go eight years with me. Do you think the Cubs say yes? Look, it's as simple as this. If they don't go... Long, long years on the, with one of these guys. They're not, getting, they're not getting any of them. So if they're serious about this, they're going to have to do it. And so if you're going to do it, they've got the resources. They could, do, they could compete for any of them they want. And if they targeted them, they would have a pretty good chance of getting any of them that they wanted. So now it becomes, are we in or are we not? And if we're in, who do we want? Now, who do you want? If, if, if you're in. If, if they, I want Trey Turner. I, Carlos Correa is two years younger. And he might get the same number of years. Yeah, I like the speed. I like everything Trey Turner brings me. Somebody in, in the game, I was, I was discussing the four shortstops the other day, and somebody said, do you want your shortstop stealing that many bases? If that's what Trey Turner brings with the bases four and a half inches closer next year with the larger bases – do you want your shortstop stealing that many bases because of what shortstop takes out of you day after day? So, and then if you don't, if the answer is no, and I want him in the 20, 25 range, which is what he's been in, and so that doesn't change, then are you getting the value added that makes him more value, valuable than Correa? Or you go to Correa who hasn't stolen a base since 2019. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Meanwhile, a, Nico he, Horner led the Cubs last year. He's a pretty good bat, though. He's yeah. He's been a gold glove shortstop. Um, he led uh, the league, if not the majors, in war in 2021. So he is a total package player. And, again, he's two years younger than the other guys. So is he the top of the market or is Trey Turner the top? I mean, that's a, that's a legit debate. Um and and then you know and then there's one guy that doesn't have the qualifying offer and that's Correa, so there's that too. So you know it, it's a really man it's one of the most fascinating markets at a position that we've had in years, even more so I would say than the shortstop market last year. I'm looking up Trey Turner. I think he only had 25 or so, which is barely more than Nico. Nico led the Cubs in stolen bases with I believe it was 20, but Turner didn't hit 30. I yeah. mean, over the course of six months, 20, 20, 20 to 30 stolen bases isn't going to kill your guy's legs, you know, so. Turner's gone backwards, 27-11, 21-32. Cor- season uh, high for him is 46, but that's back in 2017, I believe. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, as his stolen base numbers have gone down, I bet you'll find there that his other offensive production has gone up. Yeah, home run wise, he hit twenty one. The year before that, between two teams, he hit uh, thirty two. Uh, he also hit twelve in the pandemic shortened season, and he hit 
19. He's hit 28. Like, he's got pop. So he's got he's got at least sneaky pop, so if not legit Correa, pop. right, Tim? Um, I struggle with this because every, like we're saying, it seems like how much of an appetite do they have for long-term deals? I think personally, you probably, if you want one, like you're saying, you have to go that many years on some of these guys, Correa Turner. I think with Correa, if there's wiggle room to give him five, like I said last week with very high AAV, I could see that making more sense for what they're looking for. But at the end of the day, I think they're going to have to give eight, nine years. And that's where I struggle with. I, don't, I, I say like, yeah, I think I would give it to him over anyone else. But like you, for example, um, maybe you could talk about like more for I'll elaborate. You predicted free agents today and you said create Cubs. Um, I think the Cubs that goes with the caveat that that I mentioned earlier. Right. That if they were they had to have if, to if they're high. in and they and they're going to get one of these guys. They're going to have to go big. That's where I struggle with it. I, I really struggle with, like, if, if they're not going to go with years, I can't see them getting any of them. But, yes, I would go with Carlos Correa because he's a championship player and, you know, your has a full, yeah. full, full game, like you said. Here's the thing that's going to drive Trey these. Turner is two. Very good, too. Very Here's good. the thing that's going to drive these things, too. Yeah, we know the shift is going away, so there's a demand for this. You can't hide defensive deficits with the shift anymore, especially in the middle infield. The Cubs have a contact rotation what's left of it you better have good defenders y yeah or you or you better go out and get two or and what three are you doing nico guys. if trey turner or correa called right now and said hey i've been listening to the podcast read the top, I'm read the top of my prediction stories because <laughs> i did or, read it then you saw what what jed said he said we're very comfortable with him at shortstop but he's also a guy that can move and play second base or possibly any number of other positions and so we'll basically we'll see with what the roster looks so like do you think they're going to get one of those four shortstops and do you i don't i think that there's a there's a little bit of urgency there like from ownership and the business side to do something this year and if there is, uh, you know, I, I just I just don't know how all of the decision makers are fitting. If if Theo was in charge, I'd say yeah. Um, I don't know how hard a line Jed's going to draw on his philosophy on this kind of stuff. But keep in mind, look, Boris said at last week's GM meetings there were eight teams. I think he said twice. He said twice as many teams as there are shortstops. So I go through and I counted the teams that looked like they were legitimately in the market. And I, I got to 12. So I'm, I'm talking to an agent the other day who said he thinks there's 11 teams in on this four-man group. If half those teams are serious, if six of those 11 are serious, that's going to drive some prices up. That's going to drive some some years on on the back end of some of those. I keep deals. hearing Baltimore is willing to spend. Absolutely, Baltimore's got tons of money, and why why wouldn't you spend if you're Baltimore? You came so close. Your players are so young. Most of them haven't started making big money yet, and you're poised. You're right there. Uh, you can compete with these Yankees guys. in on these shortstops. That's one of the teams that I count. Do they move on from Isaiah Kiner Falefa? Oh, hell yes. Right. Um, yeah. So, Labor Torres, they don't look at as he's a shortstop. He's not a shortstop. And we'll trade him at the deadline for Pablo Lopez, I believe. Yeah. And, and, and so just keep in mind that these teams like that, where they maybe got away with not having that bona fide, legit shortstop when you had all the analytics and the shifts, you have to have it now. And Boston. these teams like the Yankees, the Dodgers aren't going to go home without one. They, they just okay. lost Trey Turner. They're going to go get one. Baltimore, Boston, the Yankees, the, the Phillies. Uh, Dodgers, the Phillies, the Cubs. There's 11 The teams. Braves, so. the Twins. All, all four teams that lost a guy. That's yeah, the Twins. That's eight right there. Um, you know, what's, uh, the, what's funny is, like, I, I saw somebody throw the Astros in the mix. The Astros don't need a shortstop. The guy that replaced Correa won a gold glove. Correct. And he was a World Series MVP. So he's, you know... They, I don't. I don't know how they do it, but they they did that. They that did is that. eight Brilliant. off the top of our head, right? right and there. I and I got my notes over there in my bag. I I, I got uh, eleven teams. I can list them off to you. I also have some Cubs breaking news. If anyone's interested in a trade, let's do it. Is anybody we've heard of? 
I have heard of him as of what's the clock say? Twenty minutes ago when the <laughs> when the rumors started leaking out, but now this is official. Is this the Mastro Buoni? Cubs have acquired is this a Bueno Beef guy. <laughs> infielder, outfielder, Miles Mastro Buoni. Uh, from the Rays for minor league pitcher Alfredo Zaraga, who had a sub two ERA, I believe it was Myrtle Beach this year. Sounds He's like an neighbor. endorsement deal in the making if this guy ever gets to the big leagues. <laughs> but uh, you know, obviously, this trade uh, Tuesday is the forty man deadline to add players, minor league players, prospects to the forty man roster, or risk losing them to Rule Five draft. Uh, so, I would imagine this guy is going to be on the forty man roster, and that's why the Rays probably traded him. Did you say he's an A ball guy? No, this is a he, he debuted in 22. He hit 300 in Triple A in 2022. Oh, AAA. oh, they sent an A ball guy. Yes, they sent an yeah. A ball reliever, Alfredo Zaraga. So they're 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 feeling their oats a little bit on this 40 man roster crunch we've been hearing about all summer. They think they got it figured out. I guess that's what happens when you. When so you how send, many on the Cubs 40 men? Did Bodie you say? off the roster. Master Boney would make it 34 because they outrighted like. A handful of guys or plus last week, and then uh, Jason Hayward. Yeah, and our key so crook. All these guys. Friend Mill Reyes. Yeah, but Reyes, the he's Reyes. a free agent now. Right. And Bodie, he's at AAA now. Alec Mills, elected free agency. I believe I read Brad Wick, who, when, when healthy, has been, I think in 2021, he didn't allow an earned run in like 17 innings is, or something. Is Bodie going to be the highest paid AAA player in baseball next year? Well, he better send his agent a Christmas card every year. Oh, seriously. Who called Jed and or, uh, Theo and said, hey, you're handing out extension offers. All right, we'll do one right now. And Theo threw them. Okay, we'll do f- well, we'll do this. Five years for $15 million or whatever. Well, that just goes to show you, right? Like, like at the time, and they said, the worst case is we can trade him, right? No, he's, you can't. You can't trade. He doesn't even have a, a Jason Hayward contract, and you can't trade him because he he didn't. He didn't get any better. But he he was smart. He's got a wife, three kids. He was, I'll give him credit for some serious self-awareness as a ball player. He knew who he was. Hey, you want a fun fact? Uh, David Bodie is the most longest tenured player in the organization with Wilson Contreras, now a free agent. Longer than Hendricks? I'm not sure fans would consider that a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Hendricks was acquired uh, in that summer. Bodie was, Bodie was the draft pick, June 2012 draft. Hendricks was acquired in July, and I believe Alzali signed in November that year. Wow. wow. Is that a fun fact to you, Cap? <laughs> no. Hendricks is the longest tenured big league player, if so I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I got to look up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Easy. Zach term. He's the only guy left from the World Series roster. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a brilliant, brilliant move. You want the contract you're saying? Yeah, I've got it right he, I here. think he's making $5 million next year. It was five and fifteen overall. So he goes this year. He goes to four million. He made uh, two point five last year. He goes to four million, and then he goes to five point five next year. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, and then he is club option of seven million and seven point five in twenty five and twenty six. Well, that's gonna be some tough decisions on those. He's not getting that one, <laughs> and I don't know if there is a buyout. On that, there uh, is a there buyout is. in twenty-five. Oh yeah, yeah. twenty-five is a one million dollar buyout. Twenty-six is a five hundred thousand dollar buyout. That is, thank you, a, Theo. A brilliant contract for the player. Yes, that it's, and you know what? And more power to him. I think players should get paid. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. If he saved his money, he should be okay. Yeah. That doesn't hurt the Cubs either. It like, doesn't hurt the Cubs. Five That's why they play. gave it to him. They didn't. They didn't need to see it play out. It's it like, well, we'll roll the dice on this. We'll have some. We'll have some serious cost control if if that uh, bat speed and, and uh, exit velocity plays going forward. I'm telling you though, that uh, Master Bologna can play uh, second and or he played second and right for Tampa Bay, but that second base picture is getting a little crowded here. McKinstry, <laughs> magical. Yeah, Master that's Bologna. a problem when. You have one shortstop who moved over from second after a Gold Glove finalist, and a crap load of second baseman. Yeah. That's not going to get it done. Surprised that they uh, did not get something to keep Fran Mill Reyes in the co- in the organization. I was surprised they outrighted him 
you can elaborate on this. It seemed like they, they had him in their plans for next year, and this is obviously before any offseason moves, but there haven't been any offseason moves, so that seemed like a pure 40-man move to me. Yeah, it it definitely was. Like, he became available. He was a free roll of the dice when they picked him up, and he did already fit in the clubhouse great. A lot of people liked him, but... But it wasn't a free roll of the dice. You picked up that contract. Yeah, but it was... It's all short-term. I mean... Look, but it was he, a few million dollars. Yeah, but you got all, a massive flexibility. It's uh, low risk. So I thought they would keep him just because that 30 home run power might would, still be there. And it should still be there. Um, but they're really, even in his best years, there wasn't much more than that. I mean, he's not a defensive player for you anywhere. He's not a left-handed power bat. And he doesn't do a lot more than the power when he's going well. Mm -hmm. So when they... When they did look at this 40-man crunch and they looked at years out, uh, yeah, there were more valuable players if you're looking at two years down the road and four years down the road that you want to keep in the organization. That to me just says like, you know, first base DH type, what have you. They're just going to – they're going to look for a first base slugging type this offseason. And, and the guys in the market, like we've all said, Abreu, you, you wrote Josh Bell in a story. Trey Mancini's out there. That to me just these started. are guys they've either talked to their agents or, or have in the well, those guys they've talked to their agents. But yeah, or, and some of these other guys they've got on their radar. And Bellinger too, like you said, is a first base and outfield type. So really, to me, that just says there's room for them to upgrade, and perhaps they feel confident in their ability to do Best so. Yeah. only hit 16 home runs. I mean, gives you a little pop in the bat. Yeah. I think he has three, as Jordan Bastion said, three minor league option years remaining, too. So that's huge. That, and, you know, I don't know. I think, sure, right? <laughs> that's my I mean, reaction it, to it. What, what is he? he he's, a, he's a cheaper version of maybe what you thought you had in Bodie. Yeah, he's 27. Uh, lefty, lefty bat. So that's, that's probably a plus. Left handed Bodie. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a plus. Okay, the question would be why would they do that, Tampa? Tampa's oh, because they're clearing that. forty man space. It's got. It, I mean, obviously they're clearing forty man space because they're getting an A ball guy. They don't have to protect. It feels like Tampa does this every year too, where they just have a bunch of guys that they develop that somehow turn into studs. And I'm not saying right. this guy's necessarily that. We don't know much about him, but they seem the to have. Arena. They're pretty interchangeable over there. It feels like, and they still do well as a team. Do they have anybody signed by Thanksgiving? I'm not talking about Mastro Buoni. I'm talking about... Master Bologna? <laughs> Mastro Buoni. Is that next week, Thanksgiving? Thursday? Yes. Week from... It's a week Sounds from Sounds like a side Thursday. dish at Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Past the Mastro Buoni. Well, describe something. Like, are you talking <laughs> about someone to the level of at least a Smiley or a Senga even? Or are you saying just, you know... Backup catcher. I say no. no. Somebody of that everyone's heard of. That makes I, like that gives fans like a like a. Hmm. I'm not even like sure. That. I'm not even sure there's going to be a small major league signing. I mean, like I don't know what I don't know what it would. So be. Jose Abreu's not a Cub by next Thursday. Why would Jose Abreu sign that early? <laughs> Why if the offer was fair? Meetings, and he wants to be aren't a Cub. For another couple weeks after that, why would? Why wouldn't he play out his market? The The Astros could be involved. The Yankees could be involved if they don't get Rizzo back. In Chicago. The Cubs could be involved. I can see that. But he's also, he's also a guy that's probably, this is his last chance. He's going to be 36 next year to get anything. Like, he might get two years. But if the market's strong enough, he might get three. Maybe he gets three in an option because the market winds up being so strong for him. Former MVP, he put up good numbers even though his power numbers were down. This is his last chance to get paid. And if and if the market gets hot for him, why the hell would he sign early? I wouldn't. Thanksgiving? I'm probably leaning no, but not not to the level that we're talking where it'd be something multi year deal of someone new, not like a smiley comeback and we're like, ooh, like I don't think so. MLB free agency is a dang the MLB offseason is a drag. I actually like despise it. Like <laughs> NBA man, Rob Schaefer, Casey Johnson, they get right away. They get boom, boom, boom. Same in the NFL. NFL, March, I, boom. NHL, I, boom. I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but I kind of like it. Oh, it's the worst. When I was when I, I was it shouldn't a, be that long. 
Like, I don't like when it goes into spring training like it did with Harper and Machado and Darvish and all those guys. I don't like that. But I do, I do like that a couple of months play out. I like it the way it used to be where now th- things would start to heat up now. Winter meetings, signings would start to happen between winter meetings and the, and the, and the end of year holidays. And right about See, if I was a star player, I'm getting my deal done if I find the right thing. If I don't, I'll go to the winter meetings. You know right. how much money is out there, Cap? There are so many teams with money. All the big spenders and have more I'm, money because the luxury tax thresholds up. If I'm at up. that level, I'm Correa. Guys, I'm making a decision by Thanksgiving. Get your best offers in. No you chance. You want me? Here's the price. No chance, because his price might only go up, especially if a couple more of those guys. It's musical chairs, man. If 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 if, the, if Boris is right and there's twice as many, okay, that's eight. If eight guys are in on four guys and two of those guys go off the board, price goes up on the other two. No, hell no. I play it out, man, especially if I'm the guy without the qualifying offer and I'm the youngest of the four. No, I play out yeah, this I'm market. I'm the guy who there's, I, there's I more wanna, money in this market, I don't want to be in Seattle or I don't want to be... I want to play for that team if we can make the money work. There's more money out there right now than there's been in a long time. Coming out of the pandemic, coming out of the lockout, higher higher luxury tax thresholds. And, I mean, even the Astros, who just won a World Series, you would think they have a roster loaded and expensive. No, they got tons of money. And so there's all kinds of teams with real needs, and there's more teams I haven't seen this in a long time. There's more teams right now trying to win than there have been since the Cubs and Astros ushered in the full-blown tanking era. All right. We will uh, reconvene later in the week and see what we can come up with, see if anything has happened. Mastro Bologna is a Cub. What's a Bona Beef? That's that's a sponsorship. What's his first name? Miles. Miles Mastro okay, Bologna. You could make a good stuffing out of that, I'm thinking. Be delicious. Hey, right. one more thing on him. People are saying his brother was a uh, yeah, 25th round pick by the Cubs in 2015. So there's been a Mastro Bologna in the Cubs Is organization. Is he still in the system? <laughs> uh, no, he was. Are, are you sure they, and, they know that it's not the same guy? No, it's different. It's different. Yeah, well, this guy was a catcher. As we circle back to our conversation, look, it's all full circle. It's he was awful. a Catcher released May 2020. All right, we'll keep you all posted. Have a great day, gentlemen. All right. All right. For Gordon, for Tim, for Tony Gill, I'm David Kaplan. This has been another edition of the Cubs Talk Podcast brought to you by NBC Sports Chicago, NBCSportsChicago.com.